spring, 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 ring, wrong, clang, clang, bling, ding, wing, wong. So it was a good video, but in part one, I had laid a huge egg. You can go look at that video <laughs> and see what I'm talking about. Moving on, let's see if we can make things right in number two with method number two, a canister. In the first part, we tried to straight up forge springs together, and I got an A for effort, but an F minus in spatial awareness. Today's a new day, and after we get these springs threaded together, we're going to be using a canister Damascus technique to get our springy dings kaiser schmutzed together. The gaps don't completely close when they're threaded like they did when they were heated and pressed in part one, but we're going to work with this and see what happens. In the last video, you saw that I made some different powder concoctions to see which one looked better with the spring. And of the 1095, 1095 iron mix and iron, I sort of decided to go with the 1095. So this is 1095 with some 1084 thrown in because I just don't have enough 1095. Here it is, we cut off the tip. This was the end of the canister. This is sort of moving forward into the billet. So here it is, cross-sectioned. See some stuff starting to show up there. On the inside, so again, this back part here is the canister. And this and this are getting into the spring. And you can sort of see that first spring coming around. Let's sacrifice a small piece, forge it out, and see what we can expect. I mean, you know what? That's honestly more interesting than I thought it would be. 
but I really want to see some of the springs on end so I've cut the billet in half I'm gonna to try to forge one of the pieces thinner then cut it up into blocks and lay those pieces on end and put back together and then weld them to the top of our other billet as the spine of the knife so we'll have some on end running down the spine basically like this All right, our pieces have been tack welded together. Let's see if we can forge them together next. I brought them to forge welding heat. I'm going to try to do some tippy tap on the anvil before I take them to the press and really try to squish them together there. Careful, careful. Oh, that's not right. I tried to get this straight up and down so it pressed without bending, but if we rewind it just a little bit, you'll see I was distracted on account of being on fire. Now I have two pieces instead of one, so I tried to weld them back together on the anvil here, the result being the production of a third piece. I took one of those and forged it flat and etched it. It's really too thin for us to use, but maybe it'll make a guard or something later. In the meantime, I'm going to weld our remaining billet, nice and safe-like, in a canister to a piece of 1084 steel for the cutting edge. The springs are hardenable, but I don't know what the steel is or how to control their carbides and grain size, so I'm just going to use 1084 for the business portion of the knife. No hard feelings, springs, but hard feelings. You suck. I hate you. So here it is, I hammered this down here so I can get a little bit of bend in the handle because I sort of like that style handle, it turns down a little bit. And I angle ground off this here. Um, this is the spine of the knife, this is the cutting edge, this has the 1084 along it. So I cut this off, I'm going to hammer this side up on the anvil. I'm going to get this hot and hammer it up. And that's all the shaping I'm going to do on the anvil. The rest of it's going to be angle ground to shape. So I've got a nice thick piece of steel and I'm sort of wondering if I could do something more to alter the pattern since our little you know, side view here that we were trying to work out along the top didn't really work out because uh, I caught on fire. There, maybe there's something else we can do. Like I've been thinking about putting a ladder pattern in, for example, or you know, remove some material on both sides and lines up and down and then squash it flat or drilling holes for a raindrop pattern. And I'm not sure... I don't know what the effect will be because if we look at our sort of our test piece here, the pattern as displayed here is mostly lines going this way. In other words, it's sort of stacked in the steel like this. At least that's what we're seeing is stuff like this that's being revealed. And really to get the most out of ladder, as I understand it, or raindrop, you need your different contrasting materials going more in this plane instead of this plane. You know what I mean? Well, after all that blabbing, I decided to try a ladder pattern. We'll just do a little rough and tumble version here.
Our knife has been thermal cycled several times in the heat treat oven wrapped in the steel foil to reduce the oxidation in the oven and we're ready for the quench. Looks like our tip warped a bit. Let's march off to the grinder and adjust our profile a little shorter. There's no sweat. I bought this carbide file guide from Creative Men in Australia. See the link below. It slides open and shut easily. Uh, finally, the carbide is countersunk to the steel guides unlike my last one where the strips were epoxy to the top and popped off while I was using it. So take a look at this. If you guys are in the market for a file guide, it's something I've, I've really enjoyed. I've liked it a lot. So. I think I'll save these stabilized burl pieces for a hidden tang knife and go with this butterscotch colored micarta. These handles are going to fit a hair proud of the handle tang so that the tang can stay etched after I fit the handles on because there won't be any sanding done to flush them up to the tang. I put the knife in ferric chloride a few rounds to etch in some relief and then I decided to use lemon juice to see if I could bring out some more interesting etch. The lemon juice tends to add some patina type colors like yellow, brown, and purple that I don't see much with ferric chloride or vinegar. So it brought out some of those here but ultimately I sort of polished them back. I put this handle together by sanding the profile first and then I attached them with the loveless bolts and epoxy to the tang and at that point you have to grind flat the loveless bolts and when you grind them flat you remove some material and as I was removing some material I uncovered this little black spot right there and it doesn't sand out it's just there so I'll take it back to the sanding belt and take off a little more material than I would otherwise sand off and we'll see if it goes away Ugh, I don't know but I'm overall very happy with this. What do you guys think?